Before we get to all the all the good things that you're going to say about the Miami Heat, did you see Collins? Have you been following Collins on social media? Did you see his his Italy? Post? I can't get enough. Oh, I can't get enough. I it's mean, amazing, you can't right? Tell it, you you can't tell if he's in New Hampshire or the Amalfi Coast because it's like in one picture you're like this is amazing, and then the next picture you're like I think you're in Manchester, New Hampshire. Um, so I'm fired up though. Girl Power Friday. Let's do it. Let's yeah. do it. Um, all right. So say nice things about my Miami Heat. All right. I'll say nice things. They are. I think better than everybody else at finding the role players. Uh, they're, they're incredible with this. I also think there's an unbelievable buy-in from free agents, not just because of the location and the track record of Pat Riley and Spo, but I think there's an overall identity of this team. Like I make the heat culture joke too when they lose. Be like, how come they didn't use more heat culture? But that's because the rest of us that don't root for the team like to be annoying about it. I think Spo is probably the best coach in the NBA. I mean, I love the guy. I love what he's done. I love how adaptable he is. I love how they change in series. All of these things. Having said that, Joy, I don't think there's some great basketball team. Uh, they beat Atlanta, who's the most disappointing team in the East. They beat Philly, who's a mess. So even without Lowry, you know, they won 50-plus games. Their point differential was six in the league. If they were to win an NBA title, that would be still pretty surprising to me. You couldn't just let me have it. This is Friday, Ryan. <laughs> I have to give you the full scope, full answer. You know how it goes. All right, well, then say bad things about Am I the, wrong? Like, do you uh, think no. they're going to win? Do you think they're going to win an NBA title? I too? picked them to win the NBA championship. You did. It has nothing to do with location. It's just strictly, you, you saw the teams, you went, that's the best basketball team this year. I did. That surprises me. I said okay. it right okay. here in the seat, right, right before the playoffs started. I picked them to win the NBA championship. And All I still right. think they we'll will. We'll see. And as of yeah, right look, now, I'm, 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 I'm still in the running. You are, and here I am thinking Phoenix was just head and shoulders above everybody else. They might look as a Dallas in the second round. So I have been wrong. I will be wrong again. But I would tell you on everything that I've watched this year, when I look at Miami, and I've heard Heat fans say, oh, well, we had injuries. Oh, you were the team that didn't have your best players most of the season? That was everybody this year, except for maybe Boston towards the very end. So uh, I, I still would be surprised if Miami falls off the championship, even as they're in the Eastern Conference Finals, because I don't think they necessarily fit the profile of, like, a team you go, hey, that team's winning a title. Well, okay. I could be wrong. We'll see. Here's here. Oh, we're being a little, you know, obviously we're 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 dripping in sarcasm right now with some of the things that we're <laughs> saying. So let let let's let's bring it back down. There isn't a team that is head and shoulders above everyone. Obviously, we all thought Phoenix had an unbelievable regular season, which they did. Chris Paul looked great. It seems since he's turned 37, he's disappeared, but. We now are seeing even even Golden State the other day down by 55 to Grizzlies without John Morant. Like everybody has these major flaws. So I truly felt like going into the postseason this year for one of the first times maybe ever, there was a true amount of parity. Like anyone could actually win the championship, even with stars. No, look, I agree. As we're sitting here in the second round, I mean, there's a case to be made other than, you know, Philly. And I think Philly would have been different if Embiid were 100 percent going into it. Um, but the Harden storyline brought itself up again. And that's why I just won't argue with people about Harden anymore because he did it again. Uh, but you're absolutely right. Like I was talking with with Bill on our Sunday pod where I go, how many times have we looked at eight teams, maybe seven, um, you know, depending on what you thought of, of Memphis without jaw or six, but seriously, like it's one point, it felt like if everybody were right, this is eight teams. You can also, you know, you can all make a compelling case for, and I, I'm with you. That parody is, is unbelievable. But I think the Phoenix thing has just been so disappointing because the Chris Paul part of it, that it's made me open up the prospect of, of somebody else winning this whole thing. Um, and Milwaukee was always kind of tough to write off, but we don't know what the Middleton thing is. So you're right. I would agree on the parody thing, but even with parody, I would have had him behind other teams. Well, I had Joel Embiid as the MVP this season, and I'm going to argue that till the end of time. But obviously things fell apart for the Sixers. And I think at this point, it's safe to stop putting the Sixers in that contender conversation because they haven't been there to the Eastern Conference Finals since 2001 with Allen Iverson. It, it, it's enough already. Like, this is what they are. And it pains me because I really love watching Joel Embiid play basketball. I think he's a truly passionate player. He cares, but he has... a a consistent injury history, which is obvious. And as he said last night, James Harden's not the guy. And Doc Rivers doesn't want to take any responsibility for anything ever. So what do the Sixers do this offseason? Well, all right. You know, all of us saw it again. Uh, and I'm, I'm a huge Embiid fan. I don't mind him being a little bit honest about Harden because they needed more out of him. Um, Harden did a bad job um, just being ready. You know, and, and that's not what they brought him in for. But here's the thing that always drives people crazy about this. You're like, OK, so we all saw Harden and we're thinking, like, wait, do you really want to pay this guy over 60 million a year, five years from now? 
Like, can you imagine like looking at your cap sheet and going, all right, 60 plus million in 2027 for James Harden when it looks like he's not fully engaged now. He's not, he's not the guy that we saw in Houston, 2018, 2019. Um, and that guy didn't always bring it in the playoffs. So when you start doing the obvious observations, you think, well, why would any team want to do that? But the problem is the way the NBA math works is that you'd rather overpay and maybe have a long-term problem to keep your current window open and keep the asset because it's not the same as saying, all right, well, we'll spend our 40 or 50 million a year on somebody else. It just doesn't work that way. My all time favorite example that I bring of all time, ironically is with Daryl Morey, where when Dwight Howard was leaving Houston, it didn't make any sense for Dwight Howard to stay in Houston. It wasn't working. Um, he and Harden divided the locker room. Um, he was becoming kind of an outdated player and yet Houston still wanted to keep him because they wanted to keep the asset. So I'm scared to death of what that number would look like at the end of the contract. If that's the full max that he gets, it's immediately the worst contract in the NBA. But it's a lot like now having a quarterback. You may not like your quarterback, but the alternative of not knowing what you get to replace it is just as scary. And that's why almost all of these guys end up getting the max deal because free agency is hard. Cap room is hard. And I'm not anti anyone getting paid. I'm just telling you, like, that's usually the way it works in the NBA. So it's likely they're going to look very similar. Uh, because they invested so much in bringing Harden over in the first place. Oh, that's brutal. I had no <laughs> points in the second half yesterday. That's insane. I would want no part of that. I, I, look, I agree with you, but I, I know how it goes. I mean, Kyrie wanted nothing to do with Boston, and Boston was still desperately trying to keep him there because they didn't want to lose the asset for nothing. Well, speaking of Kyrie... They had some interest. Some Marks had some interesting comments about Kyrie. And look, I, I don't. I don't think Kyrie is a bad guy, but I, I think not playing in half the games this season because you're choosing not to play is outrageous. And he has a long history of being inconsistent and unavailable. So keeping Kyrie again, I, I, it's almost similar to Harden. Obviously, Kyrie is a much better player and is great when he is engaged and on the floor. Is a, is a lot to risk. He's an unavailable guy. He's played in 53% of the games. Like he, he's not, he's not an available guy. What do the Nets do? It's a little bit like what we just talked about. Um, but he's, he's a tougher bet. I think, uh, because you just don't know. And this is a track record. Like if we looked at just this year with all the extenuating circumstances and he'd been playing with the team, but just this year he decided that he didn't want to, you know, get vaccinated for his own reasons. And it was like a one-off. And I think you'd see the team say, OK, you know, we had extenuating circumstances. This is how he feels. He's still a terrific player. He's still young enough. And when he's right and he, when he's right. He's, but it, this, the problem is, is this is a continuation of the Kyrie story now for like four plus years going back to 2018 playoffs. Like, look at how many playoff games he's actually missed, how many games he's missed overall. Um, and I've tried to be fair about this because there's a lot of times where I'm like just dismissive of it because I whether it's what he says or you know, just I guess I sometimes I feel a little old school. Like, is it wrong for me to want somebody to kind of still buy into a team concept and in, in team sports? Like, I don't think that should be some ridiculously outdated premise. But I actually listened to his podcast uh, on Durant's podcast. He went on with the host who did a good job at interviewing him because I was like, hey, is there anything maybe I'm missing? Is there anything maybe I don't understand about how he sees the world differently? And honestly, Joy, what I landed on is I think he likes all this stuff. I think he likes being a martyr. I think he likes the drama that goes along with it. So if that's what I'm signing up for, <laughs> I may keep the asset hoping I can flip it later on, but you have to get Durant on the same page because the whole reason Durant's there in the first place is he teamed up with his guy and players really like Kyrie. So if Durant is against it, that kind of answers the question for the Nets. But in just in a vacuum, it doesn't feel like the right bet anymore because it's not just about this year. It hasn't been the right bet for consecutive seasons. Yeah, I'm out. I'm with you on the whole like team thing. I'm out on like the not having the coach and KD is the best development coach and all that. Like you're seeing in the postseason this year, particularly having a deep team, having a well coached team, a good culture is not I mean, obviously the heat cultures, you know, that that running joke for everyone except for heat fans. But like, it's a real thing. Golden State has a real culture. Like, these teams, Milwaukee has a real culture. These teams that have built and developed young players and been patient and don't run through coaches are having success now. There's evidence of that. So this whole, like, we're going to do everything opposite of what the successful teams are doing, that's fine. You can do that. I just don't have to consider you a contender. I'm just getting to a point, you know, I've spent, I don't know how many years now, what, like almost 40 years of watching basketball. And caring about the outcomes you know i remember the first team i watched in in 82 83 that sixers team that i thought was cool as hell 
And I don't know, like, why am I supposed to sit here and, and defend guys that don't want to play basketball? Like, why? Like, this was an all-time season of, oh, you're just not going to play? Oh, you're just going to play bad on purpose and have your team lose and then be scared to have you in games because you're going to tank? So you're going to isolation tank? So as much as I love this game, um, and, and a lot of it plays out on social media, like if you're older or if you have a certain background, it's like, oh, you don't get it. Like, what's there to get? What's there to get? It's an awesome gig. You know, if you don't want people talking about you, do something that no one talks about. You know, we've all signed up to some degree of, of, of being out there enough where you're going to have people talking. These guys are doing way more impressive things than I'm doing. But I've, I've grown tired this season of the idea that I'm supposed to have an open mind about guys that just don't want to play basketball. Yeah, I feel you. And that's why it's uh, it's scary to sign up for, you know, a max extension in years with guys like Kyrie and, and James Harden. Uh, thank you for coming on, Ryan. I know it's a privilege to talk to a doctor. Um, so I'm sure your Friday is better now. <laughs> I don't know. Do I get billed for this? This was uh, I could just tell your presence now, Joy. I, you know, I mean, you always you always walked in a room and dominated, but now it's just like there's another thing going on with this whole title. So I'm I'm happy for you. This first this first session's on the house, so you're welcome. <laughs> All right, sounds good. <laughs> Thanks, Ryan. Have a good weekend. Hi, everybody. Thanks for watching. Subscribe here to get the latest from the show. Also, be sure to check out more of the best clips from the herd, or go watch a few segments from other shows on FS1.